panel this evening tonight, much like uh, our clients along the way, uh, very importantly, had a lot of great decisions in front of them and how they filtered through that, how they ultimately made their choice, where it's been great to keep in touch with all of them and they're doing so well and excited and, and made a great choice. So they're going to share all that inside knowledge tonight. So we're excited to provide this opportunity. And for our clients on the call, we thank you. And obviously we'll have some great question time. And again, I just would like to thank Jen Parsons sincerely for organizing this, orchestrating it, and it's going to be a great night. So I'll turn things over to Jen to, to get moving forward. So obviously I want to welcome, we have uh, Alexandra from Ohio State. We have Alexis from University of Finley. We have Nick from Villanova and we have Thomas from Virginia Tech. So I'm going to turn it over right now to them to just give a little bit of their background, talk about their major and really why they made the initial choice to choose the college that they are currently going to. So um, Alexandra, if you want to kick us off, that would be great. And then we'll go from there. Um, so I'm Alexandra. I go to Ohio State. I am currently a biology major, but I'm in the process of switching to molecular genetics, and I am a psychology minor. I'm on a pre-med track, and the reason I chose Ohio State, honestly, I applied to a lot of schools having no real idea where I wanted to go. I never had that one set school that I knew I was going to go to from the beginning, and I kind of did a lot of digging into what each school had to offer. I loved that OSU had the medical campus right here because I'm pre-med. There's a lot of research opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities to work and volunteer in the hospital at the Wexner Center. So I was really drawn to that and that was ultimately why I came to this decision. All right. All right. Um, Thomas, how about we'll, we'll move to you? Oh, un unmute, unmute. <laughs> Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm attending Virginia Tech and I'm an industrial and systems engineer. So at first, just like Alexandra said, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I applied to a lot of schools, big schools, small schools, rural schools, city schools. And through conversation with my parents, Jason, self-reflection with myself, I decided that a bigger rural school would fit me best. So out of the schools I applied to, that kind of narrowed it down to Virginia Tech and Penn State. So then it came down to, do I want to go where I've been going to football games and basketball games my whole life? Or do I want to go somewhere new, explore a new part of the world, meet new people? So that's ultimately what, what, what led me to the decision, along with Virginia Tech being a great engineering school. All right. And then Nick. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm from Villanova and I am a major in business. I actually don't have to declare my major within the business field until next year. I'm leaning finance or accounting though. I chose Villanova because when I came to the admitted students day, I just felt really welcomed here. I felt like I would fit in on the campus here. I loved the atmosphere. I know that uh, Villanova has a great alumni base. So um, I would have a lot of connections uh, to in the business field uh, to help with my future career. My other schools, uh, I was looking at my other top choice was William & Mary. Um, but I just, when I came to Villanova for Admitted Students Day, um, I really felt like I would fit in here. And I think I made the right choice so far. Very good. All right. And then I see, I'm taking a, a look to see if Alexis is available yet. Um, Alexis, can you hear us and are you able to talk? All right. So we'll wait on her for a second. Um, so let me move it back to Alexandra too. I just wanted to, I know Nick and Thomas answered the kind of answered the question. Were there any other schools that were your, in your top, um, top, few and did you struggle to make that decision or did you pretty much know that that was the school you wanted to attend um I definitely had a tough choice I would say that I was kind of between Ohio State University of Wisconsin and Clemson I really wanted a big school I wanted a big sports school um I just think that aspect of college is really fun really exciting um so yeah that was definitely tough but after like looking into all of the schools, I just decided that Ohio State was where I wanted to be. I definitely knew I wanted to go out of state. I didn't apply to any in-state schools, but I thought Ohio State was close enough. It's only a couple hours that it's not too bad. It's not too far away so that the adjustment wouldn't be so bad. I knew that it wasn't that hard to get home. So, yeah. 
right and let me see check in on Alexis okay so I will um I'll hold for Alexis to give her background and we'll actually um, move to some other questions um so one of the things obviously right now we have um you know several students that are still awaiting the decisions and so if you can kind of take us back to last year and and you know thinking about where you were at in the process was there anything about any of the college acceptances or even possibly um, deferrals that surprised you? Or was there anything that was a little stressful about that process that um, maybe you could share uh, with some of our current students? And I, I'll kind of just throw it out there and let you guys answer um, as you want to. Yeah, so I can go first on that one. I think I was kind of lucky in the sense that there was no one school that I was really banking on. Like, I really hope I get in here. If I get in here, I'm going here. And that kind of resulted in me. I would get feedback from schools and it was just kind of, it is what it is. And I'll make the best of what it is from there. And I think that's a good attitude to approach it with. Uh, it surprised me. I applied to the University of Florida. Wasn't crazy about going there, but applied. And they said, I can go online for my first two years and then attend in person after that. And that's something I didn't even know was really possible. So that stuck out and surprised me. Okay. No, that's a good one. All right. Yeah, I'm with Tommy. I didn't have a set school in mind that I wanted to go to. Um, I was surprised that I got into Villanova at first um, because it's such a low acceptance rate. Um, but I had applied to multiple schools that would be considered reaches that have lower acceptance rates. And so it didn't surprise me that I got into a few of those. Um, yeah, and, and just like Tommy, I, I kept my mind open and um, didn't narrow it down to one school before I got all my decisions back. Um, and so I think that's something you really need to be uh, aware of before you get your decisions that you could be accepted or denied at any school that you apply to. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw and so you really need to keep an open mind. Great. All right. Alexandra, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, I would definitely agree about keeping an open mind. I was totally one of those people that didn't believe everyone that said it's going to work out the way it's supposed to work out. Like, just trust the process. Like, I was just like, I want to get in everywhere so that I have so many options. But Trust me, I am now a firm believer that it really does work out the way it's supposed to work out. I didn't really necessarily come in having a set school that I felt like I had to go to. So like they were saying, like that definitely helps. But just because you don't get into your top school doesn't mean you're not going to love the school that you end up at. All right. And I see now that Alexis has joined us. So happy to see her. So Alexis, I'm going to kind of throw it back to you and talk about your current major, why you chose the school that you chose. And then was there anything that surprised you about the whole process? Sure. So my name is Alexis. Um, I'm a, I'm a pre-vet student at the University of Finley. Um, I came in as a third year student, so it's a little different. Um, it's my first year not at home. So I still am living kind of that freshman life, um, but I am a third year student. Um, and again, I'm there for pre-vet and I picked the University of Finley because like point and shoot at a student there and you're gonna hit an animal science student. It's like, that's their <laughs> that's their key program. I'm not kidding. You, you point and you're gonna find an animal science student. Um, everyone's walking around either smelling like goats or horses, take your pick. Um, but so that was like, that's their keynote program. If you're gonna go to the University of Finley, it's, it's for animal science. And so that's what really drew me there. Um, another thing that really drew me there, and I'm not sure what your guys' background is, but I was really looking for a Christian community, um, whether the school was Christian or whether I could find a really good, strong community. Um, and the school isn't officially Christian, but there was a very, very strong uh, campus ministries program and a lot of Christian Catholic students to really build that community. Um, and so it was the combination of the two that really was like, okay, this is cementing, like this is where I wanna go. Um, I was considering a school down in Georgia. Um, I didn't want to take calculus and they were going to require that of me, so I didn't end up going. Um, but that was another school I was really seriously considering looking at. Um, nothing really crazy as far as admissions, kind of like Thomas, I didn't really have a school I was dead set on going. I didn't have like a number one choice. It was like, okay, I'm just kind of kind of throw out my application, see what's out there, um, and then see what I find out from schools after I get accepted. Um, and as I got, you know, the financial aid packages um, and just hearing more about the schools, it narrowed it down. Okay, I'm not going to go to Kansas. I'm not going to go um, to any of the schools in California I applied to. 
Um, so no really big surprises there, but just again, keeping an open mind. And then once you have those acceptances, you can narrow down, okay, why, why would this school be better than this school? What options am I gonna have here that I might not have here? What are things that they're like, oh, this is something just our school has and not these other schools that would make it worth or not worth going. Great, all right, very good. Thank you so much for answering those. Um, so the next question is kind of now that you're integrated with the school, um, was there anything that you learned um, about the school or your major or anything that you almost wish you would have known before um, you, you decided to go there? Any, anything that you would give advice to students to think about um, prior to that decision? And that can be any of you. <laughs> Um, I, I can take this one. I would say this hasn't detracted from my college experience at all, but I would say that it's not as diverse as um, some of the other schools I was looking at. Um, it, a lot of the students here come from the same background that I do, and so I'm not really exposed to that many different perspectives. I would say if you're looking for diversity, definitely look at a larger school um, because, you know, I feel like being at a medium sized school um a catholic school um a lot of the students here are catholic and um come from like the surrounding area and so it's not as diverse a school as it was advertised as but i wouldn't say it's necessarily detracted from my experience i would just say if you're looking for something like that definitely look at a bigger school to add to that same note that nick said i had a similar experience with international students but almost opposite i found that virginia tech had a lot more international students than i originally thought whenever i applied and said i would go here uh, a couple of my really good friends one's from spain one's from paris one's from yemen so i've met people from all around the world another thing i didn't really know about virginia tech is how big their corps of cadets are the ROTCs, like I'll be walking the class and they're right next to me doing push-ups and sprinting back and forth across the field. Hasn't really added or subtracted to my college experience, but I just think it's a cool thing I wasn't too aware of before. One thing I would add that kind of shocked me is uh, when I was looking at uh, UF, they, they'll, they'll throw this whole catalog at classes at you and be like, oh, these are the classes that we have. Um, take a look, we offer this class, this production class, we have stuff with dairy cows, we have stuff with beef cows, all that stuff. And you get there and you realize, okay, they haven't had dairy cows for years. They're, they have that class, but they don't actually have the resources to offer it. So the school can tell you, hey, we have these classes, but they might not actually offer them. So it just requires a little digging, a little discernment. Um, some, when you're, when you're just looking at schools and haven't committed, um, they might get a little, you know, antsy or awkward if you ask those questions, but really digging, okay, you have the capacity to teach these classes, but are you actually going to be able to offer that for me when I go to the school? Now, those are great tips. Alexandra, do you have anything else to add? This is kind of more general, but honestly, I didn't realize how much is here, not even academically, but like we have full like rock climbing walls and golf simulators and all of these activities and clubs that you can join. There is a club for everything you can think of. And I think that if you don't join something, do intramural sports, join a club, do something, I feel like you're not getting to your full potential of what you could get here. And for how expensive college is, you seriously might as well get the most out of it that you can. And so I try to join as many things as I can, do as many extra activities. A couple weeks ago, um, I don't know how many people know Big Time Rush, but they had a free concert here just for students that like OSU organized. And like, it was um, really hard to get tickets, obviously, because it was the first 1500 kids, but there are just so many cool opportunities that like you should try and go after. That's so great. All great suggestions. Um, so now let's talk a little bit more about once you made the decision, how did the roommate process go? So how did you find your roommate? Are there any specific um, protocols that you would typically recommend to students once they've made the decision or anything to follow? So I'll throw that one out. <laughs> All right, I can lead off here. I didn't want to go random. The idea of going with a random roommate scared me. Just I don't want to get paired with a weirdo. I don't know. But <laughs> The girl who used to live across the street from me, we kind of grew up brother and sister, but she was four years older than I was. She moved to Maryland and ran a sailing camp down there. And one of her employees was a senior boy who was going to Virginia Tech. 
So she set us up. He was from Maryland, so I, we never met before, but, you know, talked online, called whatever, and we've been pretty much best friends. So it's been a great scenario. It's worked out well. I met my roommate on Facebook. I also do not want to go random. Some people have good luck with that. Some people don't. It really is random. But I met her on Facebook. I absolutely love my roommate. She is from Cleveland. We did not meet before we got here, but we do absolutely everything together. And we're living together next year as well. Um, so there are a ton of Facebook groups. There are pages on Instagram. There are so many different outlets where you can find roommates and people will just post like pictures of themselves and like descriptions about what they like to do. And you can just kind of start chatting to people, chatting with people. I talked to so many people that were all great. And then eventually you just kind of find the person you click with and it worked out for me, so. Yeah, so I actually went random um i i like alex uh, like alex said um random is really just random it's luck of the draw i know people that have had really bad experiences but i've had a really good experience with my roommate i'm living with him next year and we're best friends and um we really live well together i would say if you go random make sure to reach out to your roommate and call them once or twice and text with them just to get to know them a little bit, it makes it less awkward when you first meet them in person. And that's not even if you go random, even if you just find someone off of like one of the Facebook groups, make sure you get to know them a little bit before you're going to be sleeping 10 feet away from them. Yeah, Nick, you're a, a braver man than I than I would have been. Definitely would not have gone random. Um, I actually didn't have a roommate for the first semester. Um, this semester that changed. Uh, I, I met a friend in classes and we ended up deciding that we'd like to room together. Um, it would give us the opportunity to move into a house um, and her and I are great, but I've heard um, lots of great things from people um, who went, who had a random roommate assignment. I've heard lots of horror stories from people who had a random roommate assignment. Um, but from, from my friends and what I've heard, the biggest thing isn't that your roommate has the same major as you or has all the same likes as you, but if they're, if they're on the same sleep schedule as you and they're they're just about as clean as you are and know how to how to live with somebody else that beats any sort of sort of connection any sort of like similarity you might have with them you could be total opposites as far as majors and likes but if you guys can get along in that your roommate isn't up till 2 a.m when you're a lights out at 10 30 type of person or you're both okay if there's some shoes on the floor because nobody's a, a super duper neat freak those are the things that are that are super duper important more than oh okay um i'm, I'm an animal science student i want to make sure my roommate's also an animal science student well it doesn't always work out that way but if you guys are compatible kind of like nick said you're gonna be you're gonna be sleeping five ten feet away from that person if they're if they're up till 2 30 in the morning you're like my dude i have an 8 a.m this is not cool um, like that's going to be the, the biggest like point of contention between you and your roommate. Oh, again, good, great advice for everyone. Um, so let's talk a little bit about just in general, you know, every school is different in terms of orientation and the initial class scheduling process. So talk a little bit about, um, you know, if your school happened to have any specific events that were related to that or what, what you learned through that process of going through the initial scheduling that, that you would share, that you would um, advise our current students to be on the lookout for? Um, so OSU has an admitted student stay, which like you don't have to be committed. You can just come after you've been accepted, just kind of like tour the campus. I did not go on one of those. I do have a friend that did, and that was what really like um, solidified her choice to go here. So I'm sure that's great. And then we do have an orientation over the summer, which is when we schedule for classes. So the orientation's two days. It's a really long two days in really hot summer. But then you schedule with an advisor on the second day. You meet with one of the advisors. They kind of tell you what you should be taking. They give you a couple options. And then you just go to the computer and schedule. And then at least for us after that, we're on our own after that. We have to look at our degree audits and just kind of see, make sure we're keeping up with our classes. You can always meet with your advisor. I bother my advisor like once a week just to make sure I'm doing the right thing, but you don't have to do that. Well, I'll just I'll just start calling people out then. Um, Nick, you want to go ahead and talk about your process? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So 
Uh, my first semester, uh, Villanova makes your schedule for you. So I didn't have to worry about scheduling classes for my first semester, but I did have to worry about scheduling classes for this current semester, the past semester. Um, I got one of the earliest registration time slots. Like they give you a time where you register for all your classes and whatever classes are open at that time you get and that's what you're stuck with and I had one of the earlier ones so I could choose my professors and um, choose my classes but I would say if you get stuck with a bad time slot or if you go to register and there's not a lot of classes left that you want like it, it's going to work out because you're probably going to get a good time to register the next semester um, and you're probably going to be able to take that class that you wanted that you didn't get next semester. And so if you don't get the perfect schedule that you want, you're going to take the class that you want in later semesters. Don't worry too much about getting the perfect schedule. It's OK if you get four out of the five classes that you wanted. And you know what? I, I saw another question pop up, so I might turn it back to Alexandra, but then we'll have it. And Nick, while you're talking, how many classes did each of you take your first semester as you were getting adjusted? Yeah, I took so five. I oh, okay. Yeah, I, I took five too, and I'm taking five this semester. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, great. All right, Thomas, I'll have you yeah, go ahead. Same with me. So I also took five classes my first semester. I wasn't as lucky as like Ohio State to meet with my professor in person or Villanova to have my schedule made for me. It was just one day over the summer, we got an email, hey, registration for classes are open. And then we signed on and I uh, picked my classes. The software was not the best. So my advice, I asked my mom for help. I'll admit it. I asked, hey, mom, can you try to help me with this? And she was a huge resource to me. So my advice would just be, don't be afraid to ask for help because it can be intimidating. All right, and Alexis. So um, I completely missed my registration date as a first time student, which was terrifying when I found it out. Um, I don't know if I slipped in somewhere because I wasn't a freshman and I was kind of not a transfer student, um, but I completely missed my registration date. And apparently my advisor was supposed to reach out to me. Um, so I ended up doing a phone call um, because there was a couple different, kind of like what Alex was saying, there was a couple different days, um, like end of spring, early summer for, for freshmen to go in. Um, and meet with their advisor in person and put a schedule together. Um, and so I completely missed that, but I got on the phone with my advisor. My school actually puts a registration hold on your account every single semester. So you have to have your advisor clear your schedule before you can register for classes, which on the one hand is great because then um, you're making sure that you're on task. Um, and on the other hand, it's like, okay, well, I'm eight days from my registration date and we're on spring break. So my advisor's not gonna, probably not gonna see the email I sent him asking to meet. Um, but kind of like what Nick was saying, it's not the end of the world if you don't get your classes, the, the classes you really want, especially those GEs, those you get to move around. Those are just puzzle pieces you can shift back and forth. It's not the end of the world. It is kind of like the most stressful football draft you will ever have to run for yourself ever. Um, I know when I'm doing registration dates, my whiteboard, I have a schedule of the week and I have post notes all over the place going, okay, what if, I, what if I did this option? What would my schedule look like? If I move bio down an hour, where does chem end up? Um, and so it's, it is kind of stressful. Meet with your advisor, figure out, okay, what classes do I need? What classes aren't mandatory for this semester? Um, it'll really help you out on the semester of classes. I'm in six lectures and two labs uh, for a total of 18 credits. Uh, so it's quite a lot and it's more than the average freshman, um, but that's that's just what I've been doing for the last year. Um, so now let's move into a little bit and talking about um, the actual process of moving in. So um, talk talk just for a minute, bit, a minute about what that process was like for each of you. Um, do you have any advice on that transition of leaving home, um, especially for, for some of you that maybe traveled a little bit further away? Um, I mean, all of you really did. None of you are really close to home, but um, but especially that aspect. And if any, and again, any tips that you have for, for students and even their parents let, letting go as well? Um, I'm not going to lie. For me and for a lot of people, it sucks at first. It really does. I hated it. I cried every day. And I just thought I was so convinced that I was going to come to college and the transition was going to be easy. I was so ready to move on. And it's a lot different than you think, especially like I'm coming to a school with 70,000 kids. It's a lot. But I 
it really helps that I like my roommate and like I was able to start doing stuff with her. And once you start going to classes, you start meeting people, join clubs, do other things, it gets so much better. I love it here. I never go home, like seriously, never. I have not been home once this semester. It gets better. Give it a chance. Don't, if your first month is bad and you hate it, just wait. I promise, like for most people, it gets so much better. Yeah, going off of what she said, I think my transition, I was pretty lucky. It was pretty smooth. My mom raised me, especially towards the end of high school, to be pretty self-sustaining, I think. So looking back, I see why she did that. It made the transition easier for me for living on my own. Still don't like doing my own laundry. Still don't like washing dishes. But uh, I would say it helped that I had a good roommate right off the bat. So I had somebody I knew, somebody to do stuff with. Uh, but a piece of advice there would be I knew two kids coming in to Virginia Tech. And they both, we had ideas about rooming with each other, but I figured it'd be best if I branched out and roomed with somebody I didn't already know, because then that would be a connection. And then now they're both really good friends with my roommate and I'm good, really good friends with their roommate. So it automatically expanded our circle and gave us more automatic friends. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what both of them just said. Um, I would say my experience is more like Alex uh, in that the first week was pretty rough for me. I didn't know anyone here uh, coming in. And so the first week I felt pretty lonely and isolated, especially being six hours away from home. I'm thinking, what did I just get myself into? But I would say after the first week, when things started to cool down and we started to get into the normal flow of classes um, and I really started to get acclimated to the school, I, I think things started to get a lot smoother and I started to enjoy it a lot more and um, find my group of people. And so I would say, like what Alex said, just give it a chance. It's not going to go um, perfect for everyone, uh, especially at the beginning. But I would say after the first couple months, um, you should feel pretty well acquainted with your school um, and it, it'll just get better. Yeah, so um, kind of the same situation as both Nick and Alex, um, a little different. I so was raised really independent towards the end of uh, high school, kind of like Thomas mentioned. Um, and so the like actual transition of, oh, like I'm responsible for my own schedule, my own time management, laundry and things like that wasn't such a big thing. But about a month into school, I definitely hit a wall and I'm like, I know nobody here. Um, like you don't have that that emotional connection with anybody yet. And I didn't have a roommate, so it was a little more difficult in that way. Um, but you there's there was almost no better feeling than coming back from a break um and realizing okay i have friends to come back to if that first week that first month that first two months of school you're like i don't know if i belong i don't know if i found a friend group yet it will get better it's not going to be terrible forever um you you'll find those people that you that you have classes with or that you have breaks with or that girl down the hall that you keep seeing on break um that you'll you'll find those friends that your schedules match up um and you just have that connection and it, it will make things so much better please don't feel pressured to make your best friend on freshman weekend i know some people who are like oh yeah like i was best friends with my roommate i met all my best friends during move-in day um i met nobody during freshman move-in day and thought i was a failure um i wasn't you you are going to make your best friends when you realize who you have classes with um and it will make things so much better um well, so to kind of to piggyback a little bit on that question, but also just to talk about the transition um, with responsibility. Um, number one, I would say how how often, or especially when you first started, how often did did you talk to your parents and keep that connection? Because I'm sure we have a lot of parents that are online that are trying to um, see how that's going to go. And on the idea of responsibility, is there anything that really surprised you about truly being responsible for yourself that you maybe never gave thought to that again you might have a tip for someone so first the parent question and then the uh, responsibility question so i started out calling my parents very often because i miss them a lot especially i would go on facetime I, and i'd say put cooper on i want to see my dog oh. so i that i mean i still do that i call them once a week for sure on sundays we facetime and catch up um i do kind of would suggest to other incoming freshmen to 
obviously you're going to call your mom, you're going to call your dad, but make sure you call your friends because you don't really realize when you're in high school and you're spending every moment of every day together, it's so easy to like create those bonds and keep them strong. But when you're across the country, if you're not in contact with them on the phone, if you're not talking to them, then it's pretty much all lost. I mean, you come back and you're still great friends, but I would make a strong effort to stay in touch with as many people as you can. All right, who else wants to take this one on? Um, my is like at the beginning too, but honestly, it hasn't changed that much. My mom calls me like a lot. Um, so we talk a lot. My dad sends me pictures of the dogs every day, every single day. Um, I he works from home, so like he sits with the dogs all day, and I am getting pictures of them constantly, and I miss them so much. But yeah, no, it definitely you realize kind of how much you take your parents for granted when you leave. It's true what they say. Um, but yeah, no, we talk all the time. I honestly think my parents and I have gotten closer since I left for college because when you live in the same house with them, you know, you're just constantly getting annoyed with them and thinking that they're being overbearing and all that stuff. But when you leave, uh, you realize that it was out of love. And as for the independence thing, not much really changed for me on that. I was pretty independent at home. I pretty much did my own thing. Like I didn't really have my parents doing too much for me as I got older. So like doing laundry and cleaning my room, that's really nothing new. Um, and it's really not hard. So I haven't really had a problem with that. Uh, yeah, so I, I agree with Alex on the independence thing, but the one thing that I will say really surprised me was not having a car here I have to use public transportation a lot, and it, it's it's not the best. It's it's not the most fun. I mean, I prefer driving around, um, but getting getting used to that and getting used to okay, like I need to leave some extra time for this, or am I going to walk there, um, or maybe Uber. It, you really start to think about how you're getting around when you don't have a car, and so that's something I had to get used to. Um, and then regarding how much I talk to my parents, I talk to my parents once a week, Sunday nights. Um, I think having a scheduled day and time um, has really helped me to, um, you know, stay in touch with them. And it gives me something to look forward to throughout the week. So I had what seems like a little bit of a different relationship with my parents than you guys did. Um, I think I went the first month of school without calling my parents. Um, and then I hit that wall and it was just like, okay, what am I going to do? And then my mom called me and it was like, oh, obviously this is the answer to all my problems. Um, so if you're, if you're that kid, that's like, oh yeah, no, I'm not going to call my mom, call your dang mom. Um, <laughs> it will make life so much better. And for parents, if your kid's not going to call you, just call your kid. Your kid wants to speak to you, whether they are going to tell you or not. Um, because it, it really does make things so much better, especially if you don't have that circle of friends, that emotional support, that emotional outlet, you, you're you gonna wanna talk to your mom and, be, and just complain about that kid in class or the test that's coming up. And you might not have the friends you can do that with yet, but your mom's always gonna want an ear. Um, your dad's gonna wanna hear what's going on and send you pictures of the animals and things like that. Um, so just, just call your mom. I promise you it will fix all of your problems. So we talked a little bit about like general responsibilities and getting used to that, but let's just talk for a second about the whole balance of, you know, schoolwork with your social life and the fact that when you head to college, time management takes on a whole new realm because you have a lot more free time in managing your schedule. And um, so just let's talk for a minute about how you, how you manage that. Um, and again, any advice? Um, time management is one I still struggle with and I'm still working on. Um, it's a lot different. I have a lot of time in my day. I, for the most part, except for like two days a week, I'm only in class for like one and a half, two hours a day. So you have a lot of time. It's what are you going to make of that time? Because I came out of high school, like not really having to put a ton of work in. I I did well in high school and I knew that college was going to be harder, but it's definitely a lot different. I definitely have to put the time in, um, especially for like chem, definitely a killer. Um, so I 
for me. I know that if I come back to my dorm, I will be in my dorm for a while. So I try to go straight from class to the library and it forces me to get stuff done. I do my best to treat college like a nine to five job. I do work from nine to five or if it, it doesn't always go till five, but I try to keep my work in that time frame. And then my nights are free. I can watch my TV shows. I can be on my phone. I can be with my friends. And then on the weekends, like usually I just have to like review or study. I don't really have any work to do. And I'm doing my best to stay consistent with that. But on my good weeks, when like I am able to like do that every single day, my weekends are super open and super free. And I don't have to stay in all night and not experience all the fun things that college has to offer. I agree 100% with what she had to say. I think thinking of school like a nine to five job is a great way to look at it. You go in, you get your stuff done, and then your free time is actually free. I think you take a lot better advantage of college in general as a whole. You can take advantage of more opportunities, get involved with more stuff, as long as you're on top of your work. One thing that I like to do is try to stay a day or two ahead of schedule so that if something comes up, I have a little bit of flexibility in my schedule. Okay, I have an intramural playoff game. I can do it. No problem. Oh, my friends are going hiking. I can join them. I just like to stay a day or two ahead so I have some availability to do some stuff if it pops up. Yeah, all, all great advice so far. Uh, to add on to that, I would say get rid of distractions. I know it's so tempting to just pick up your phone and take a look at who's texting you or go scroll through Instagram. But when I have work to do, I try to put my phone out of reach and put it on silent or just turn it off. Um, I would say that when I'm distracted, it takes me double the amount of time to do work that uh, th than it would normally take me if I wasn't distracted. And so I would say stop procrastinating and start minimizing the distractions that you're going to have when you actually sit down to do something. So I've got a pretty busy, a pretty busy schedule when it comes to school, not necessarily classes, but I'm usually studying like a, like a nine to seven type deal with just the amount of homework and labs and things like that. Labs will take the most amount of time. I kid you not. They are time saps. They are not worth the one credit, but you have to take them anyways. Anywho, that's a whole other discussion. Um, but like the three big things I would tell you is one, Alexander mentioned it. If I go back to my room, that's it. I'm done. Like no more work is getting done because my brain shuts off. And so like, I, I literally do not go home until it's dark if I need to get work done, because I know the second I step into the house, that's it. Brain shut off. There's no more work to be done. Um, so going from classes and finding different study spots on campus, you find you're getting distracted in one, pick up and do another subject somewhere else. Um, it helps you compartmentalize. It also helps you kind of move on and stay motivated while you're studying. Um, another thing, like Nick said, I, if I'm in my room and I'm trying to do work, I will check my phone across the room. My roommate laughs at me, but I literally throw my phone across the room or if we're studying at one of the big tables in one of the student unions, I will slide my phone towards her and she takes it and puts it on the other side of the table because she knows exactly what I'm doing. She'll tell me if I get a phone call or whatnot, but if Instagram goes off, I can't touch it anymore because it's by my roommate. And she's like, nope, you can't touch that. You're trying to do work. Um, and then the last big thing I can tell you is those half an hour breaks between different things, please use them to study for classes. Don't go, oh, I've got half an hour. I'm just going to sit there scrolling on TikTok on Instagram, whatever. Um, you have four half an hour breaks in the week. That's an entire class's worth of studying. That is two hours. That's a whole chapter of chemistry. That's all of the studying for biology, whatever it might be. So those half an hour breaks are more useful than you could possibly think. Please don't use them to scroll on Instagram. Very good. Um, well, so I we were having a quick conversation before everyone joined um, about how many times you've had a chance to come home this entire semester so far, and we're talking first and second. So give everyone an idea of how many times you've been home, and then also talk just for a second about what it was like that first long visit home after you had been gone, and just what, you know, was it was it surprising to you how you adjusted back at home or were there any issues that you had now that you've been living on your own and, and you came home? <laughs> All right, so I've been home three times. The first time was our fall break was just a weekend, but it happened to be when Virginia Tech football was playing at Pitt. Oh. So I went there with some of my Virginia Tech friends who are also from Pittsburgh, met up with some of my Pitt friends. So that weekend was awesome. And then I came home for Thanksgiving. That was awesome because all my other friends from other schools were home. When you have fall or spring breaks, a lot of times the dates don't line up so you can't see your other friends. But I love Thanksgiving and Christmas for those reasons. And when I came home, I think it I kind of went right back in where I 
left off. Like we didn't really miss a beat, my parents and I. I came home also last semester, fall break, Thanksgiving break, and then Christmas, obviously. Um, and then this semester, I haven't been home yet. I'll be home next weekend for spring break and for that week after that. And that'll be the only time I go home this semester besides summer. Um, the first time going home, it is really, it, at least for me, it was really hard to go back. I was still kind of in that adjustment period. It was the beginning of October. So it was like a month into school and I was definitely still like struggling to kind of find my place here. So the first break home, I definitely just like didn't want to go back. Like I felt more comfortable at home. Thanksgiving break, I could not wait to leave. I don't know what it was, but I just was like, you know, like I have a routine at school. Like I have my responsibilities, things to do. I truly was just so bored out of my mind at Thanksgiving because so many of my friends were doing stuff with their family. I didn't really get a chance to see them that much. I was just at home doing nothing. And I was just so ready to go back. Yeah, so first semester I went home for fall break, Thanksgiving break and winter break. And then this semester, I have a spring break. And since I go to a Catholic school, I have an Easter break, too. I would say the majority of my breaks, um, I kind of felt like what Alex described, that I was in a routine and it just felt kind of weird to go back home and not have anything to do. Um, it almost felt like I was living two separate lives. Like I have my life here at school, all my friends here at school, all the different things that I do here. And then back home, all my friends back home and the places I normally go to back home and the people I normally hang out with. Um, and so that's that was a weird adjustment for me at first. I didn't realize it would be um, it would be like that. But um, I would say that you pretty quickly get used to it um, and that like there, there's going to be overlap. Like Tommy said, he saw his friends uh, from Virginia Tech uh, at, at Pitt. Um, and went to a football game so like it's not it's not um, as like separate as it'll seem at first so like a whole bunch of them I've only been home three times um, I got to go home for Thanksgiving um, and Christmas break and then I'm actually on spring break now um, which means all my midterms are next week which was poor planning but you know they they don't quite care about that um, and it, it is really nice to be home you do feel like you're Kind of a fish out of water you're not in your schedule anymore um it's not dining hall then class then study then class then um but it's it's really nice you don't realize maybe how uncomfortable you were um trying to figure out your own schedule and put your own your new life together until you get home and you're like oh like this the part of me that sits on the couch for two hours and then rolls around and finds my bed is super duper comfortable um live it live it up you'll you'll probably still have to end up doing studying at home um or if you're home over winter break uh working or something like that um but but eat the home cooked meals get your extra hours of sleep it's it's really wonderful being home um even if it's not so easy for me i home for me is california so i'm in california now um and school's out in ohio so it's it's a whole trek to get out there and back um but it's it's so much it's it really is nice being home you might think you're okay at school um and school's great you got your friends you got your classes you're working towards something towards some long-term goal um but there's nothing quite like going back home and having your parents go oh how was your day and you're like oh great i get to tell someone every part of my day so it, it really is nice all right and then i would say this is kind of more of the last formal question um you know as we have a lot of families on here that are getting ready to make the decision is there anything that you know you and your family even um, when you were making that final decision that were you were either surprised to learn or you give advice on um you know just thinking about the total cost fine you know finances of college and especially for those of you that are you know obviously further away from home was there anything that was surprising maybe even about travel costs or just kind of living on your own that maybe you didn't think of that you would give advice to any of the students that are considering um you know what what their final decision is um I feel like this might just be, I'm the oldest kid, and when my parents were going to college, it was definitely a lot different than it is now, so the price of college was definitely a shock, um, 
they all everyone says college is expensive but i feel like you don't really realize it until they send you financial packages and a lot of them don't give you anything um so that definitely is a big one um as for me um Ohio State was the closest school I applied to in terms of distance. I'm about three and a half hours away from home. And so travel's not that bad. Uh, again, I don't come home often. So I guess that also plays a part. If you were going to come home every other weekend, probably would be different. But my parents drive up, we get lunch here, and then we go back. So travel costs aren't bad for me. But obviously, if you're going to go further away and you're having to fly, it's going to be a lot different. So. Yeah, piggybacking off that, not just the price of college I was surprised by, but the price of textbooks, like $150 for 100 pages of calculus. It's crazy. And then like even water cups at the dining hall, like a little Dixie cup, they charge you 25 cents for. Everything costs money here. But one advice on like applying for scholarships or financial aid, I just say do as much as you can because the worst they can say is no. And the best that happens is you get a little bit of free money. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with the advice to just apply for scholarships. Uh, a, lot, a lot of schools have uh, specific scholarships for certain students and certain majors. And even if you think you have no shot at getting it, it doesn't hurt to apply. It can be a, a game changer when it comes to the cost of college. And so just sending in an application won't hurt you. Um, and then I would say general advice, um, like the others talked about, just think about the distance, um, because the distance that you're away from home um, can really make a difference in someone's college experience. Um, for me, I'm six hours away from home, and I feel like that's the perfect distance for me. I wanted something that was a little bit away from home. Um, and far enough so that I could really explore a new area, but I didn't want something where I would have to sit on a plane for several hours um, just to make it home. And so I would say really take that into consideration when you're choosing a school. So a whole bunch of great, uh, great points made. Um, as far as finances, um, one thing I would really, really do is that I really wish I'd done is apply to those scholarships everyone. I know my parents wish I applied for more scholarships, um, but I, I got really lazy because my school handed out a pretty big chunk for merit, so for, for GPA, um, but ap apply for all those scholarships. It literally will not do you any bad um, to, to, to write up a short essay and send it in. Um, yeah, I guess that's what I would say. And then when you're, when you're looking at travel, I really do wish I was a little closer to home. I love the school I'm at. I love the experience I'm getting, but being far away from home is a lot. If you book, you book those flights out in advance and it's fine, but the costs add up. So really something to consider whether you're willing to, to, you know, hand over three, four, five, six hundred dollars for a flight home if Thanksgiving break is only six days um, and things like that. So. Um, we do have a question in the chat, um, and that's is one we had not addressed. Um, how's the food in the dining halls or or what you're able to buy on campus? <laughs> okay, I can take this one. Virginia Tech actually is rated number two out of any college for their food behind a culinary school. So the food here is honestly better than what I get at home. Don't tell my mom that, but I mean, there's so many options, anything you could ever want. There's I even saw last week they had lobster in a dining hall that's like 50 feet from my, I didn't get it, but it looked really good. They have lobsters, I mean, anything you can ever imagine. It's, I love the food. I know there's probably different opinions out there. I think I got very lucky with that. Did factor into my decision a little bit, but I've been having a great experience with the food. They don't serve lobster here at OSU, but it's not, it's not bad. I like, I'm not gonna say that it, is a five-star restaurant or anything, but I don't hate it. One complaint I do have is that I will say that the food that's worse for you is like the better food. They don't have like a ton of like healthier options. And you know, like that's a hard part of college. Everyone talks about it and you know, you try to eat healthy, but they don't have a ton of options or a ton of good options for that. So yeah, they have like great pizza. They have great grilled cheese and fries and stuff like that. But like your pretty much only option if you want to eat like healthy is like a salad bar. So that little complaint I have, but the food's not terrible. Yeah, I've been living off of grilled chicken and rice 
for the past two semesters, which isn't a bad thing. Um, but like Alex said, the the healthy food options are a lot smaller than the the food options that are going to be less healthy for you. They have a lot of fried food, um, and I would say some of the stuff here is hit or miss. Um, but my advice would just be be open to trying new foods um, because they're not because if you're at a school that has a mediocre dining hall, there may be nights that you find something that you say, oh, well, I don't want to eat that or I don't want to eat this. Well, you have to eat. And so be open to trying new foods, even if it takes you outside of your comfort zone. So my school is pretty small. Um, it, it is a private school. I think we've got uh, a little over 3,000. So it's not huge. A lot of those are grad students. A lot of people live off campus. So we have one dining hall. Um, it's not huge, but there are a number, there's a number of options. Um, kind of like what Alex said, it's not great. It's not terrible. You're not going to get food poisoning, but you might not like when every station is serving fish. Um, so like my rainy day option is if there's absolutely nothing I like, they have a soup and salad station and then there's always pizza, um, which isn't my everyday because it's very easy to eat unhealthy when the good food is usually the the really unhealthy food um but it's it's not great it's not terrible some days it's a chicken and rice type of day or a pizza and salad type of day um but there there are some good things it's hit or miss as we're um winding down to the last five minutes or so i'm going to continue monitoring chat and then obviously if anyone else has any additional questions they can ask but um what i'll throw out to you right now is just do you have any final pieces of advice that we did not cover um, that you you uh, you know feel strongly about uh, letting letting our students know? So my, my advice would be like Alex said earlier is just do as much as you can, get as involved as you can, take as great advantage of the time here as you can, and to just don't blink, just take every moment for what it is and enjoy it because it feels like yesterday I was moving in and. I'm already almost three quarters of the way through my first year. So just enjoy it while it's here. It goes fast. It goes really fast for sure. Um, get involved a lot as much as you can. Um, I want to go to med school, so I kind of need a loaded resume, but I encourage you to do it no matter what, even if it's not necessary. I do a lot of really cool volunteering activities that I think are just like really interesting that I really enjoy doing. So I think... But even if it's just you want to do a sport, a club sport, or you just want to join a club that you think is interesting, just do something. You might as well like get everything you can out of wherever you go. And then secondly, this is a little more niche, but if anybody's thinking about doing the Honors College, I'm in the Honors College here, and it comes with a ton of opportunities that a lot of people don't know about. Like I can apply for specific scholarships that are only for honors. I can do specific study abroads that are only for honors, research opportunities. The honors classes are really small. Last uh, last semester, my biggest class had 30 people in it. And at a school of 70,000 kids, that is rare. The professors are really, really, really good. My I'm in honors chem right now, and my chem professor is awesome. He's recommended me um, to work under a couple of different researchers. So it's definitely really good for building connections. If you're somebody who wants to really build those connections and be in smaller classes, I 100% recommend it. You don't have to take all honors classes. The I have to take 18 honors credits out of my total 121 credits, and you can choose what honors classes you take. They don't have to be hard honors classes. Um, so I, if anyone's looking into that, I really recommend it. Yeah, I agree about making the most of your opportunities and participating in anything you want to participate in. Uh, I also have some niche advice. I would say the first time you do laundry and you put your clothes in the dryer, put it on low heat. I made the mistake of putting my clothes on medium heat the first time. And now you think it's just medium. It's, it's not that bad. But since these uh, dryers are always running, uh, I pulled my clothes out and they were burning to the touch and I put on some of my t-shirts and I could barely fit into them. They shrunk. And so I would say the first time you do laundry, be careful, put it on low heat, be conservative. And um, sometimes I take my clothes out uh, like a half hour early because the dryers can get so warm. And so be careful with that. I would say uh, the dryers have beat the crap out of my clothes but that's partly because I just crank up the heat because I just want to get it over with. Um, 
And so know that laundry might not be the best experience at first. Adding to that, I'd also say take tissues out of your pockets because the first three times I was shaking my clothes for your tissues and my dryers are the opposite way. If I do medium heat, I got to do them twice through or do two laundry because they just don't get warm. So it just depends. So I'm kind of in a similar track as Alex, she's pre-med and pre-vet. It's the same, like you really want that stacked resume because like from your freshman year, you're like pressured to do all the things, do all the research. Um, do all the volunteering. So get involved, but get involved in a way that's going to be sustainable for you. Um, if you don't care about the herpetology club, you don't care about lizards, please don't join the herpetology club. It might look good on your resume, but if it's not something you can sustainably keep up, it really will not be worth it. Um, if you're looking for those volunteer opportunities, find somewhere where you can get plugged in and really, really be someone who cares about whatever it is you're working towards. Um, it will really make the difference. Um, and then a step past that, um, if you get to college and you figure out that your major is, is not what you want to go for, let's say you go for engineering, you get there and you're like, I, there's no way I can be an engineer. I don't, it's your major is not your identity. It is okay. It is more than fine to change your major. It's not your identity. It's not going to be the end of the world, especially in your freshman year. It's, it's not going to set you back any, any amount of time. Please be open to changing your major because that's that's going to be your four years. You don't want it to come out to something you regret or come out to, okay, well, I don't want a job in this field. So now I have to figure out, figure out something else. Uh, you, your entire being isn't attached to what subject you're studying primarily. Um, and then one step past that. So I know my school is a private school. Um, there's a flat rate tuition for full-time students. So if you're taking anywhere between 11 or 12 to 18 credits, you're paying the same amount. If your school is something like that, take a minor, take all of the classes you possibly can, because you're not going to be able to get um, a professional class in photography, or, um, or maybe it's astronomy, or maybe you're interested in physics, take all of the classes you can, because you're not going to get another chance to outside of college. This is your place to really find, oh, I've, I've never taken, um, I'm interested in this specific type of history, or oh, hey, there's a Russian lit class, take, take all of the classes, because you're not going to have another chance to do it. All of you have offered such great advice today. So I just want to thank everyone, especially our panelists. I, I think it's so great to share this experience um, as, as you are going through your first year. So thank you, Alexandra, Alexis, Nick, and Thomas. And then I also want to thank everyone that took the time to listen in because they've offered, all of our students have offered such great advice. And then I'll also uh, turn it over really quickly to see if Jason wants to add anything. And, um, but thank you, thank you all so much. No, this has been great. Um, again, I'm very grateful for our student panel. It's very gratifying to see them successful and really thriving in their decisions. So again, it's been really just great information that's been shared tonight. I really commend everybody. I'm very grateful for Thomas Nix. Alexandra, Alexis, uh, spending some time with us tonight and really sharing really tremendous information that I think will help uh, the students on the call. And, and maybe we have some future panelists uh, on the call here tonight, uh, taking the place and passing the torch here a little with some of this great insight. So I'm very grateful for everybody's time. Again, Jennifer, awesome job to your organization with this. I think it's been a great night, hopefully uh, for our families as well. And we're very, very grateful. So thank you all. And we'll let you get on with your night.